Uh, greetings, and welcome to the uh, second and uh, final episode of our uh, Morrow Naughty Madness Showcase videos for the 2018 Madness Team-Based Modding Competition. Over the course of uh, one month, uh, seven teams had to build and release two mods based on randomly uh, you know, generated challenges. And today, we'll be taking a look at the uh, second batch of those mods. Uh, each of our teams had to build and release an ocean and religious-themed uh, landmass and quest mod in only two weeks' time. And uh, six out of our uh, seven teams have released some mods. The uh, last team, uh, Team Flamboyant Homages, were unable to uh, finish their mod in time due to a uh, variety of factors. So we only have about uh, six mods to uh, showcase today. And in the event, we also have the uh, final round of scores and also, you know, the uh, winners of the competition, uh, which we'll be covering uh, later on. Uh, for now, though, you'll find uh, down the links and uh, timestamp annotations down below. So let's just uh, go ahead and get started with our uh, showcase here. And to first off, we're going to, you know, be checking out the Manifold Spires by Team Drama Kwama, uh, composed of Greatness 7, Remiros, Smirial, and PhD in Sorcery. Now our first uh, landmass model of the day starts out via a series of rumors in the uh, City of Vivek, which will uh, begin a quest line that will, after a very short while, uh, take you to the Manifold Spires, a new landmass far out in the ocean controlled by the Tribunal Temple. And right away, you'll notice that this isn't, uh, you know, like other landmasses. There's no uh, flat terrain here, or gentle hills, traditional mountains, or hidden glens. Oh no, the uh, manifold spires are exactly what the uh, name would imply. A spire is a stone just jutting uh, straight out of the ocean, upon the tops of which you'll find uh, the lofty buildings of the uh, Tribunal Temple. And indeed, this is uh, not only a religious institution, but as the mod description will tell you, uh, this is an educational haven for the mathematics, science, magic, where young Dunmer of great potential are taken at an early age to just uh, for utilize a genius. And truly, can you imagine a better place to study in Old Morrowind? For the Manifold Spires are absolutely breathtaking in their verticality, offering a scenic heights in which you can just fully appreciate the view, as well as beautiful gardens to a stroll through, outdoor seating and dining, and study areas where the ocean breeze provides a delightful companion to your just beautiful surroundings. And the uh, curious uh, floating spires that surround you on all sides provide just an awe-inspiring and uh, epic backdrop to your activities. But of course, there's more here than just a scenic and incredibly uh, unique landmass. There's also a, a short quest line involving how this isolated temple compound has become isolated with, you know, limited communications, apparently a result of overly aggressive dreath. Though, uh, truth be told, this uh, quest line is uh, really quite short and honestly doesn't uh, provide a huge amount of content. So we won't be spending, you know, much time taking a look at it here. And then we'll be focusing on the beautiful locations that you'll get to visit here. From the uh, tops of these breathtaking spires down to their very heart, with the crystalline caverns that uh, could arguably uh, even give Melkor a run for his money in just the atmosphere department. And uh, really, I'm hard pressed to uh, say which is better. The uh, spires with their uh, verticality or the caverns with their just a beautiful detailing and a sense of atmosphere. I can just imagine spending hours, you know, strolling along in this uh, cavern complex and just enjoying the visual feast of it all. But in the end, that's really what Manifold Spires is, a visual feast with limited substance. Outside of the uh, one short uh, quest line, there's not much to do here, and most of the NPCs have little to uh, no uh, unique dialogue. Uh, really, there's just enough here to uh, qualify for the required mod categories of the uh, second challenge, but uh, with any luck, the uh, team will continue work on this mod after the competition is over. But uh, moving on, let's take a look at the uh, scores here, and uh, Manifold Spires, despite being largely a beautiful location to visit and uh, not much else, uh, managed to win second place in the uh, second round of Madness, earning a score of uh, 24 points out of a possible 30, getting high marks in uh, Judge Preference and Creativity. Uh, this means that uh, Team Drama Karma has scored a total of uh, 49 points for the competition, uh, securing first place overall, and becoming the modding champions of Madness for 2018. Of course, uh, living up to their name, this is doubtless going to cause more than a little bit of drama, as this means that Greatness 7 has won for the third year in a row, and each and every one of those wins has included a final mod that was, at best, incomplete and lacking in content. Uh, some of you might even uh, suspect a conspiracy afoot, but I swear, we've been using different judges every year, and I don't know how this keeps happening. Uh, personally, I suspect Greatness 7 to be some sort of wizard who can just bind uh, the winds of fate to his will. It's really the only logical explanation. But moving on, we have Great House Sujama by Team Flying Guars, uh, composed of the Drunken Mud Crab, Pete the Goat, That Dwimmer Guy, and Memento Mortius. And really, Memento, you've got to change your name. I mean, everyone else in your team has the word the or that in it. It really should be that Memento Mortius, or the Memento Mortius, or, you know, something of that nature. 
But anyway, well, how to describe this mod? It's certainly a bit of an odd one, but essentially it's a faction mod that starts out when you next talk to the talking mud crab merchant out in the Azuris Coast region. Apparently he wants to start his own great house with uh, Sujama and mud crab gods and presumably hookers of some variety. And if you agree to help, this will lead you down a quest line to establish Great House Sujama, complete with a, a new headquarters, so you'll help build on a mud crab island which has a rather uh, unique appearance, uh, perfectly suited to such a, well, eccentric faction. Uh, also note here is a, a new replacer for the uh, Mudcrab Merchant, uh, giving him a new look and feel, as well as obviously tons of a unique dialogue, as is typical of a uh, TDM mod. Uh, there's also quite a few quests here. Unlike the uh, Manifold Spires, which basically had just the uh, one quest, uh, you'll find about uh, twice six quests to do with a Great House Ujama, which is, you know, quite a bit of content to uh, keep you occupied. Uh, notably, a lot of these quests and a lot of the uh, followers of a Great House Ujama are, uh, well, again, you know, eccentric and involve a lot of Amaro uh, and Easter eggs. And one of our judges even went so far as to call this the best faction mod ever built entirely around Amaro and Easter eggs. And it's certainly, you know, best not to take this mod too seriously. Uh, this is, after all, about what you might expect a faction to be like from the fabled maker of the uh, Bitter Curse Tree Simulator and uh, the uh, Rock mod. And in any event, uh, the uh, quest line here will eventually involve some sort of conflict with the uh, worshippers of uh, Eshiogorath, who will stage an attack on Great House Sujama for, uh, some reason. And uh, there's even a couple of digs here at the 2017 marathon winning mod Immersive Madness. Outside of the uh, quest though, there's a, a number of new items, as well as uh, new Mudcrab Honor Guards, which are, uh, well, rather interesting looking. But the uh, one thing you might notice here is a lack of an actual new landmass for the uh, landmass category of our second challenge. Uh, quests are all plenty, but uh, the Lamas theme does seem to be lacking, as noted by a couple of the judges who may have knocked, uh, you know, a few points off of that. And uh, speaking of, let's take a look at the uh, scores here. Uh, surprisingly, uh, Great House Ujama came in third place, with a uh, score of 21 points, just barely uh, beating out Team Nordic Chefs for a third place in the final round. Uh, it was also the only one to get the exact same score from every judge here, a uh, 7 out of 10, which perhaps goes to show that the uh, judges didn't I uh, really quite know what to make of this eccentric entry, which uh, is probably one of the oddest mods submitted for this year's Marlon Marty Madness. And in any event, uh, the uh, team got uh, largely low scores in uh, judge preference, but uh, high scores in creativity, which is really to be expected with a uh, TDM mod. And overall, this brings uh, Team Flying Claws to uh, 42.5 points, uh, putting them in 4th place overall in this year's Marlon Marty Madness competition, a respectable spot, uh, only 1 point behind 3rd uh, place. Now we're moving on, we're next going to be uh, checking out Order of Sanctity by Team Hungry Hungers, composed of Tal Shadow, Big Boss, My Mian, and Light Source. And much like the uh, Manifold Spires, uh, this landmass and quest one starts out when you talk to an NPC on Vardenfell. Uh, this time around, a knight in Nissus who's looking for, uh, you know, recruits for the Order of Sanctity. But uh, before you can embark on your uh, epic adventure, uh, you'll need to uh, first prove yourself by dealing with a threat in a, a nearby tomb, involving just a, you know, small amount of dungeon delving. But once that's over with, you'll be sent to the uh, Order Sanctuary, a massive castle on its own landmass, and it has to be said, if the Manifold Spires is, is the most uh, unique landmass mod submitted for this year's competition, there can be little doubt that Order Sanctity is the most epic looking mod in this year's Marlon Marty Madness. I mean, everything about this castle just shouts epic, with awe-inspiring heights and verticality, and a truly just a creative use of the Imperial Fort uh, tile set. Uh, honestly, uh, sometimes I think I should have included a verticality category in the uh, judging criteria, because, you know, verticality just improves everything. And Tal Shadow has really just managed to uh, knock this out of the park, not just here, but also with their uh, first mod, uh, Tal Felisa. And again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Tal Shadow is just a really an incredibly impressive exterior landmass martyr, with some just truly amazing talents for building creative, epic, and uh, unique locations. And I really just don't know how you can build such amazing towns and citadels in just such a short amount of time. I mean, the uh, team only had about uh, two weeks to put this together, and already I would rank this in the top 10 modern castle mods in the community. And uh, for those of you who don't remember, we did a top 10 uh, castle mods video about... I think it was uh, two or three years ago, and this definitely deserves to be on that list. Oh, but sorry, you know, I'm gushing again, I just can't help it. I'm a simple mer, I see verticality, and I gush, it's just, you know, how I am. But anyway, getting back on track of our uh, showcase here, much like a Great House Ujama, but with an actual landmass, the Order of Sanctity is a faction mod with a number of quests for you to, you know, go on spanning the whole of Vardenfell. And most of these quests involve dealing with and fighting various abominations and unnatural creatures. 
as this group of Imperial Knights uh, seeks to uh, protect the realm from anything that uh, may threaten the uh, Empire. And as you might imagine, this faction has fairly close ties with the Imperial Court, and you'll be able to uh, receive blessings from, uh, you know, the uh, Nine Divines as you continue to do quests for the Altar. But uh, no worries, we'll be avoiding spoilers here, just, you know, suffice to say, there's hours of content here to, you know, keep you occupied. But moving on to the uh, scoring part of our segment here, the Order of Sanctity received uh, largely uh, middle-of-the-road marks from the uh, judges here, earning a score of 18.5 points out of a possible 30. A lot of this appears to have been from low marks in judge preference and uh, middling marks in creativity, which is a little insane considering the just uh, sheer awe-inspiring nature of Scarwood Castle, but uh, perhaps the uh, judges were basing their scores more on the questing side of things, which, uh, you know, compared to the other submitted mods here, uh, may have been seen as more just standard fare when shown next to the quest from mods like the uh, Demon of Knowledge, uh, Great House of Jama, and the Battle Right of Mafala. Uh, either way, this brings the uh, total score for Team Hungry Hungers to uh, 37.5 points, uh, putting them in 5th place overall, which really isn't uh, too bad for a team composed uh, mostly of new modders. And with any luck, they'll, you know, compete again next year, as there can be little doubt that they have plenty of potential. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Battle Right of uh, Mafala by Team Norik Chefs, composed of Enclave Killer, Lady Phoenix Farrows, uh, Mort, and uh, Pikachu and OTM. Now, there were a lot of just uh, really creative mods uh, submitted for this year's uh, Mighty Madness, but uh, Battle Right of uh, Mafala is... Oh, uh, well, it's a, a bit different, and really just, I would say, a, a unique, you know, sort of experience as we'll see more of in a moment. But uh, first, this one starts out when you talk to a stranger in the uh, Black Shark Corner Club in Vivek, and after a short amount of dialogue, you'll find yourself transported to a lighthouse on a far-off island, and as it turns out, this island is the uh, Crescent Moon, an island dedicated to my father, where uh, blood-crazed uh, battles are held for the amusement of the uh, Dated Prince, and her cult of followers. But uh, before you can, you know, partake in the festivities, uh, you'll need to equip some gear, and unlike most mods out there, uh, you can't use any of the weapons, armor, or magical items that you've brought with you. Uh, no, indeed, the uh, mod forbids you from equipping uh, foreign objects on the Isle of uh, the uh, Crescent Moon, and instead you'll just have to, you know, use what you can find, and uh, the uh, mod includes dozens of new weapons, magical spells, potions, and uh, much more uh, for you to uh, use, like uh, broken glass spears, pitchforks, broken glass bottles, a uh, rusted iron armor, and just uh, so on and so forth. And once you've found enough, you know, equipment to uh, make it out on your own, uh, you can explore the island. And before we get too far here, I need to uh, point out something uh, just in the upper right-hand corner here. Uh, you'll notice that this mod adds a player count to the uh, UI, which uh, tracks how many active assassins and competitors are left on the island. And in order to uh, win my father's favor and escape the island here, you'll need to uh, track down and to uh, kill them all. However, you know, NPC placement is a uh, random. Uh, each time you play, everyone will just be in a different spot, and NPCs will hunt down and kill each other as well. So, more than likely, before uh, you even kill anyone, uh, there's already, you know, probably going to be a few corpses just scattered about. And, in a way, this is basically the uh, Morrowind version of a uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Only, you know, with NPCs in a single player instead of a uh, multiplayer. And, obviously, this will require the latest update of the MWC not only build, and this one will not work with OpenMW. And now, the uh, island you'll be fighting on is actually uh, fairly large, uh, covered in intense and just a uh, perpetual fog that uh, blankets everything, adding, uh, you know, an extra uh, sense of atmosphere and terror as assassins loom out of the shadows here. And there's also quite a few locations uh, for you to uh, discover here, from uh, ancient ruins to deep and dark forests to a lighthouse, shipyards, an ancient uh, library, a shrine to Mafala, and even more, you know, hidden locations uh, for you to find. And there's uh, quite a bit of stuff that's uh, hidden with chests and loot, uh, just hidden in various nooks and crannies uh, for you to uh, discover here. Uh, this is a rather dangerous place, though, and uh, you'll have to, you know, face off against a, just a number of assassins before you'll find everything. And again, I just have to note how unique this entire mod concept is, you know? I'm not really sure anything like this has uh, ever been attempted before in a Morrowind mod. And whether or not uh, you personally like it, uh, this will probably go down as one of the most unique mods of 2018. And personally, I had a lot of fun playing it, and I would certainly, you know, recommend it if you haven't uh, tried it out already. It's uh, definitely worth playing, just for, you know, the uh, unique experience. But anyway, uh, moving on to the uh, scores here. Uh, the uh, battle right of uh, my father earned uh, 20 points out of a possible 30, uh, putting the uh, team in 4th uh, place for the uh, second round of the competition. Uh, despite an incredibly uh, unique concept and extremely, you know, high scores and creativity, 
uh, the mod fell a little bit behind in the judge preference and functionality department. Uh, perhaps due to the uh, frustrating nature of trying to, you know, track down the last couple of assassins, which uh, due to their uh, random placement uh, might take some, uh, you know, time to find. Uh, still, these low scores are a bit baffling. Uh, only one judge out of our panel of three had this as their favorite mod of the second round. And I have to admit, uh, the uh, scores do seem a bit harsh, but either way, uh, this hasn't really hurt uh, Team Nordic Chef too much, because overall, they still came in uh, third place for the competition, uh, getting a total score of uh, 43 points, a well-deserved, you know, top three ranking. But uh, going on to our next mod, we have uh, Bathe in the uh, Light of the Colored Rooms, a placeholder mod about Meridia uh, standing on an island and giving you a quest by Team Pierce Briars because they uh, screwed up the regular entry. And yes, that's the entire mod title. Uh, step aside for Mora, there's a new absurdly long title, uh, Champion in the Room. But anyway, as stated in the uh, title here, uh, this is by Team Pierce Priors, composed of Gavrila93, Kreese, Articus Hort, and Luge1. And really, the uh, mod title here is probably at least half the content of the actual mod, because there's really not much here. Uh, you'll meet Meridia on an island and get a quest to uh, get a Duma tube, and that's, that's pretty much it, really. That's uh, just about all the uh, content uh, that you'll find here. Obviously, their uh, regular entry ran into some sort of an issue, and they were unable to uh, complete it in time. And anyway, just uh, moving right on to the uh, scores here. Uh, this mod managed to get about uh, two points out of a possible 30 from, uh, you know, the judges. And really, that sounds a lot harsher than it actually is, as only one judge uh, actually agreed to uh, review this mod. And in the event, this score puts uh, Team Pierce Prize in last place for a total of 21 points, and hopefully, you know, they'll have more luck in uh, future competitions. Uh, finally, we have the uh, Demon of Knowledge by Team Sexy Sloans, composed of Danae, Dark Knight, Timur Lord, and Corsair. And now, as you might imagine, with a title like the uh, Demon of Knowledge, uh, this is quite obviously a mod based around everyone's favorite uh, mysterious data prince, uh, Hermaeus Mora, and it all starts out when you visit a uh, bookshop. And as you're leaving, you'll find uh, just a curious and seemingly demonic book in your inventory, uh, complete with uh, unique shader effects, which makes for a really just cool opening introduction here. And in any event, this will begin you on a quest to find out the origins of this uh, mysterious book, following rumors and hearsays until you finally arrive at an uh, isolated hermit shack out in the uh, Shugorad region. And right away, you'll notice this hermit is a bit, uh, well, you know, eccentric, with piles and piles of books just all around. And clearly, this fellow is a man after my own heart. Uh, my own living accommodations bear a uh, striking resemblance to this, uh, minus the uh, dead floors, of course, and the uh, bedroll, and really everything except the books, but... Uh, anyway, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, apparently this fellow is a collector of uh, odd and rare tomes, and he uh, also seems to be on the run from something or someone. Uh, despite the uh, many mysteries surrounding this uh, odd hermit, he'll send you out on a quest to uh, discover some ancient data ruins buried uh, beneath the island here. And this will involve a bit of swimming, as these ruins are just uh, partially submerged, and perhaps just a bit of fighting with some of the, uh, you know, overly hostile sea life. But uh, once you're, you know, through all that, uh, you'll come across a, a Daedric statue to none other than Hermaeus Mora, uh, buried deep in the ground and surrounded by uh, yet more books. And after this introductory uh, quest line, uh, your newfound uh, hermit friend will come clean as a worshipper of Hermaeus Mora, and admit that the uh, reason he's out here is to find some way to uh, summon the uh, Daedric Lord of Knowledge and establish a new cult of Hermaeus Mora. Uh, should you uh, choose to uh, join in with him, uh, you too can help build a new cult here, and uh, while we aren't, you know, showing it off here, because, uh, you know, spoilers and all that, as you progress through this questline, uh, the island will uh, gradually build up with uh, new shacks, and new followers of Hermes Mora, and of course, a right and proper, uh, you know, Daedric Shrine for this Daedric Prince. But uh, before you can get to all that, uh, you'll first need to uh, fend off a batch of uh, cultists from an opposing Daedric Lord, and, uh, you know, shut down an Oblivion Portal and all that. And once all this is done, you'll eventually be able to travel to the uh, Daedric Realm of Apocrypha, a dark and sinister realm full of uh, just uh, forbidden knowledge, uh, paper tornadoes, and curious Lovecraftian creatures. And uh, you'll notice there's a lot of influence and inspiration taken here from the Dragonborn uh, DLC for Skyrim, which is only practical since, you know, there's almost uh, no in-game visualization of Apocrypha in the Elder Scrolls series anywhere. Now, one of the uh, truly impressive additions here is that uh, Dark Knight actually managed to build an entire new tile set for this uh, Realm of Oblivion, which has since been released as a modest resource for anyone to use, and I'd highly recommend, you know, just checking it out. But anyway, we're going to leave off here before we spoil too much, and because this is, you know, certainly a mod uh, worth experiencing for yourself, so instead we're just going to move straight on to the uh, scores here. 
Uh, the uh, Demon of an Orange came in 5th uh, place for the uh, second round, earning 25 points out of a possible 30. It earned high marks in creativity and uh, judge preference, with uh, nearly every judge appraising it to uh, some degree. And uh, the high score here has also propelled Team Sexy Slows into second place overall for the uh, competition, with a total of 47 points, just a couple of points behind Team Drama Kwama. And this is even more impressive when you, uh, you know, consider they were in 4th place for the 5th uh, round. But uh, that's uh, pretty much the end of our showcase video here. Obviously, there were a lot of uh, great mods uh, submitted for this year's competition, and they're all, you know, worthy of attention. As always, a special credit and thanks goes out to all the modders for, uh, you know, just making this year's competition possible. I hope we'll, uh, you know, see you all next year, and in the meantime, down the links can be found down below. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.